The slightly spooky removal of Warhammer fan-made animation goes on, with the latest animations that have vanished from YouTube being the excellent ones that were made by Sodas. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I just wanted to talk about the strange things that are happening between Games Workshop and YouTube, and what appears to be a growing trend of anyone who gets to a certain level making Warhammer fan animations, seems to be getting a tap on the shoulder from Games Workshop themselves, and having their videos taken down from YouTube, supposedly going to be resurfacing on Warhammer animations in the future. Really quite a lot of channels who have been making Warhammer fan animations have had their videos taken down from YouTube, I believe at least some of the list is Astartes, perhaps the most famous one. The people who made the Primaris Black Templar animation, Lost Legion Studios who are producing the Exodite, Codex Film who made the Iron Within animation, the people who uploaded the video of the Last Church webcomic, and now to add to this already fairly respectable list, we now have the animations by Sodas going down as well, and I apologise if I've missed any off that list who should have been on there. Basically with each one of these channels, Games Workshop has reached out to them, They've all posted a very similar sort of message saying about how they're utterly thrilled to be working with Games Workshop, and then most of their 40k content comes down off their various channels. It is a shame, as now aside from Astartes, which they uploaded to the Warhammer community site, we can't see any of the projects, so it's not much fun for us as viewers. Obviously I have absolutely nothing but admiration for all of these people, they make some truly outstanding 40k content, and particularly coming from myself who only has an incredibly basic grasp of how to make YouTube videos, the idea of making something like a 3D animation, with an awesome combination of the look, feel, sound and storytelling, is just so skillful on a level that I can barely begin to comprehend myself. I really enjoyed the 40k animations by Sodas, in particular the Death Core of Krieg one, which had all sorts of awesome things in it, including seeing quite a lot of Space Marines in action, both Loyalists and from the Traitor Legions. Hopefully we'll see them reappear in some form at some point. This is the message that Sodas put up, in perhaps a slightly spookily similar style to all the rest, which at least to me implies that it's not entirely just of his writing, and it says worse to the effect that Games Workshop have reached out to contact him about his animations, thanking the community for all their support, is removing all Warhammer 40k content from his channel, and any further announcements will be found at warhammercommunity.com. It's also gone on to announce on the Patreon page that his Warhammer 40k videos won't be carrying on for the previous three projects that he was planning on doing, but still will be working on at least some things that are 40k related as part of this Warhammer Animations collaboration thing. He also said that he will keep on doing things that aren't 40k related on his YouTube channel. Of course I'm not one of the animators that has been reached out to like this, but at least from an outside perspective, it looks like this might be the induction process that Games Workshop are using for bringing in these fan-made animators. A community post on the channel that made The Last Church into a YouTube fan film, does seem to be maybe a little bit more candid about the details, and perhaps give us a bit more of a clue as to what's going on. It does sound like rather than just blanket sending you a cease and desist letter, Games Workshop do genuinely get in touch with the creators, they likely have some sort of team that reaches out to them, and probably have quite a tricky conversation, basically saying that they are genuinely impressed with their work, and have no doubt that Games Workshop are grateful for getting so many people interested in 40k on YouTube, but then they have to gently remind them, that they do own all the intellectual property that all those animations are based on, so in the legal sense they really aren't allowed to make those sort of animations, and they could basically legally require them to stop or seize all their YouTube earnings if they wanted to. I think it's pretty likely that there will be an element of carrot and stick here, otherwise I just don't really find it plausible that quite so many fan-based creators would have deleted their content off YouTube quite so happily. They all seem to have been made an offer to come on board with the new Warhammer animations team, which I must admit I find really interesting as to exactly what they'd negotiate in terms of paying these guys. I know things like the Astartes videos in particular must have been extraordinarily lucrative, that guy literally had something like 10,000 patrons giving him money, so it does make me wonder whether Games Workshop has gone somewhere to matching that, or whether they just don't really have to, because they likely have the power to say either join us, or we can just shut down your 40k things for good. It seems like each of the creators has accepted this offer, though how much choice there is is a bit suspect, I'm not really sure that any of them could afford to be sued by Games Workshop for infringing IP, but in any case, when they do comply, or if their Warhammer related things on their YouTube channels get taken down immediately, they express one of these simple statements expressing their happiness to work with Warhammer community, and funding around the animations such as Patreon pages tends to get shut down. If Astartes is anything to go by, eventually the projects get re-uploaded to Warhammer community after any IP infringing things have been ironed out, 
For example, Astartes had to redo basically all their audio because he used a bunch of sounds and things that he technically didn't really have license to, things from computer games and things. Different people have different opinions as to whether or not that's really harmed the quality of the video. I don't really think that the new audio is really all that much worse than the old one, and it's really the animation that's the most impressive thing anyway. But that's one thing that Games Workshop seems to have picked up some flack for, for messing with an already awesome film. I can only imagine that the period of silence that a lot of these creators have experienced is while they get to work on their old projects, perhaps redoing all the audio from scratch, so they can be uploaded again in an IP-friendly way, where Games Workshop isn't at liability for stealing anyone's stuff. Then, I guess in theory after that, we'll hopefully get more quality animations from the same creators, but coming out under Games Workshop and Warhammer Community's banner, and maybe even some of the animators might have an additional amount of support, maybe more assets that they can use, or help with some of the donkey work on the videos. Aside from a few teasers, such as the Exodite trailer, we haven't seen anything of that yet though. We do know that for quite some time now, Games Workshop have been building up to a Warhammer animations reveal. They said that it's going to be some sort of project that you can access from the My Warhammer account, and I kind of suspect they might be stockpiling some of these fan-made animation projects to come out at the same time, as well as some of these in-house projects that they've been making, such as the Hammer and Bolter, and various other short, high-quality animations that they've been funding. I suspect that might be why we've not really heard all that much from these fan creators at the moment. Any work that has been finished is likely being stockpiled up for a future release. Obviously, like I said, quite a lot of speculation here. If anyone knows any more about the process that Games Workshop contacts these people, feel free to let me know down in the comments. I'm happy to learn as much as anyone else. It's been interesting to read over some of the community's reactions to this strangeness going on. In particular, one of the main reactions of the community is just being annoyed that they won't be able to view those videos on YouTube anymore. Every single one of those projects that exploded to get over hundreds of thousands or millions of views. It genuinely got quite a lot of people more interested in Warhammer. Projects like Astartes reached an entire wider audience that Games Workshop doesn't seem to be able to reach themselves through their normal means. If they do just keep all these animations stockpiled on Warhammer Community, people just aren't going to stumble across them. I'm going to guess that the Astartes video that Warhammer Community has uploaded is going to get something like 1 or 2% of the views that it would have got on YouTube. Warhammer Community is just such a tiny website comparatively, and it's a shame just to think of that amazing work not being seen anywhere near as much. It does seem a bit counterintuitive for Games Workshop as well, that basically cost themselves an absolute ton of free advertising. I can't help but think the decision to remove the videos on Astartes' YouTube channel really is one that might cost them quite a lot of new players and collectors in the future. Maybe at least to make a lot of people a lot happier, they might consider re-uploading it on their own official Warhammer channel, then it can still be seen and enjoyed by a lot more people, and it would still very much be in the place where it was originally published. I think it is quite easy to be annoyed at Games Workshop for doing these sort of things, but I do kind of understand why they do it as a business. They are a company that needs to make money, and their single biggest asset is their intellectual property, control of the entire 40k universe, and all the things that they have created inside it. In all honesty, I think that these fan animations really are pretty harmless to Games Workshop, in fact they're probably beneficial, but unfortunately it's still probably in Games Workshop's long-term interest to try and stop this sort of thing developing and becoming the norm. As I believe with copyright law, if they don't enforce it equally with everyone, they couldn't stop people making more abusive uses of it in the future. I think they just don't want to be left in a situation where people follow some sort of fan creator out there more than them for their own official background and the intellectual property that they do own. I'm not saying that it isn't a bit of a crap situation all round, but I think it's useful to understand where they're coming from. At the very least, by reaching out to these artists and giving them some sort of opportunity to collaborate, they're definitely acting a lot better than they could be by sending out a flurry of cease and desist letters and trying to silence all of these channels for good. Finally, I just wonder what happens if people just keep on making fan animations like this. Maybe it's a tiny expense compared with the whole of Games Workshop, but if they have to keep on buying out channels indefinitely, it makes me wonder whether they'll just keep on bothering with this strategy or have switched to being a bit more mean. It seems unlikely that people are going to completely stop making fan animations like this. I guess it sort of depends on how big they get before Games Workshop actually pays some attention and starts that induction process. So anyway, sorry if that was a bit of a ramble. I know a lot of that was really quite speculative and I might be woefully misinformed. Please feel free to correct me in the comments below if I've got anything wrong. It's just a whole situation that I can't really help but find pretty interesting as a YouTube creator who talks only about Games Workshop's things myself. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics I'll certainly be keeping up with Games Workshop's releases, in addition to all the regular tactics content on the channel. 
Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos, I would just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page, and you can find that in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, such as seeing certain new videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next, and automatic entry to the prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just be interested in supporting, the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.